And it's time now to start formatting our artistic text. In the last couple of lessons, we looked at ways to bring artistic text into a page here in Corel Draw. Now it's time to format that. And there's a few different ways we can do this, some very handy tools. We're going to continue to use the same file we've been working with in the last couple of lessons, our artistic text file. If you've skipped to this lesson, though, and you want to get caught up, you can go into the Lesson 5 folder of the exercise files if you've got them and open up Artistic Text 3. That'll get you all caught up with me. And I'm on the first page here. You can see we've got artistic text all over this page. We've got the title up at the top, which already has some formatting applied, a special effect that we'll get into later on when we start examining the interactive tools that you have in the toolbox. But down below, you can see I've got some plain old text that I've entered here as labels for my ear of corn. Now I'm just going to add one more piece of text. I'm going to go over to my text tool here. And I'm going to click over here just to the right of my ear of corn just once and type in just what I said in capital letters ear of, I'm going to hit enter here, corn, just to have it on two lines. Go back to my pick tool now and you can see I've got artistic text on two lines. I'm just going to move it here above kernel. Perfect. All right, so let's start formatting some of this text. I'm going to start with the husk over here. I'm going to click right on that. I'm going to press F2 on my keyboard. That allows me to use my zoom tool now to zoom in to the word husk. And let's see what happens when we do some simple formatting. Of course, we've got our property bar, an easy way to change things like the font face and the point size. I've also got some of these attributes like bolding, underlining. Italics is not available for this particular font called Arial Black. So if I wanted to change this font to something else, like just plain old Arial, watch what happens as I hover over these options. See down below, in behind my menu, I'm getting a live preview of what that's going to look like if I was to select one of these options. I'm going to leave it at Arial Black. Same thing goes for the point size. If I wanted to bump this down to 10, you can see how small it gets. And as I hover over these different point sizes, you can see it growing. I'm going to leave it at 36 points. If I want to bold that, you can see it gets a little bit thicker. I can turn that off. Same thing for underlining. Turn it on and off with these toggle buttons. And then I've got some alignment options here from this little drop down menu. Now, this won't apply to a single piece of artistic text like this that's on one line, but when we get over to our new artistic text that we just entered, which is on multiple lines, we'll be able to see the difference. Now, there's an even better way to have access to all of these options. You'll notice over here on the far right hand side of my property bar, I've got something called character formatting. Control T on your keyboard is the shortcut. You can also access this from the text menu. Character formatting is a docker that's going to open up. So let's go down to character formatting, give it a click, and check out over here on the right hand side. We've got our character formatting docker open now. And we've got lots to choose from here, including the font face. So here's our font list that we saw earlier, and we have our live preview. It used to be you'd just see a sample piece of text fly out here on the left showing you what this might look like if you were to make the selection. Now we see it right in our document here in Corel Draw X4. So you're getting a real live preview of what that might look like if you were to change the font. So I'm going to go down to this one, Bookman Old Style. And you can see there's a little fly out here too. Light, light italics, semi-bold, and semi-bold italics. I'm going to choose semi-bold. There we go. That now appears up here at the very top with semi-bold selected. And of course, I could change those options just by coming down here. As I hover over those, again, I get that live preview. I'm going to leave it at semi-bold. Now, the point size is still 36 points, but I can change point size. It's all from one convenient location thanks to this docker. I could bump that up. I'm going to go up to 40 points. You can see I've got my underline and my alignment options all from this docker. And then down below, you'll notice that I've got some character effects as well and character shifting. Now, these sections can be collapsed. Notice the double arrows here. If I click on the double arrows, I collapse those sections. To expand them, I click the double arrows that are now pointing down to open them up. So character effects can be applied to the selected artistic text. The other options that are not available right now require me to actually select the individual characters. We'll do that momentarily. But you can see here I've got underlining styles. And as I hover over these, I see a live preview. Yes, I see the sample text just left of my pointer, but look at the text in the document. I'm getting a live preview of what it would look like if I were to make any of these selections. I'm going to leave it at single thin line and give that a click. 
Strike through is another option. So if you want a line going through it, you've got lots of different options for the line style. But I don't want any, so I'm going to select none. You can see overline is another option if you want to line over. I like that effect with the single thin line to match my underline. That's cool. And then I've got some options here for the case. Now, I've typed this in in all caps. So if I go to small caps or all caps, really nothing happens there. If I type in the word husk in lowercase, then I'd be able to use these options and see a live preview of what they might look like. Position, same thing. I've got subscript and superscript. Now, typically you're going to select individual characters here and choose which characters need to be subscript or superscript. Think of H2O where the two is a little bit smaller and lower than the rest of the text. That would be subscript. And then if you wanted pi r squared where the two is smaller and higher, that would be our superscript. In this case, we don't want any change in position. Now I'm going to go over to my text tool here and I'm going to click and drag. It's called swipe selecting the entire word husk. And when I do that, notice that my character shift options are now available to me. So if I want to angle each individual character, I can use my arrows. So if I want to tilt them back, I can change the character angle by clicking the up arrow. See how they start to tilt back five degrees with each click. And I can tilt them back down. I can go past horizontal or zero degrees, tilt them in the other direction. With my underline and overline though, I think I should leave that at zero. Horizontal shifting can also be applied. You can see I can move it a little bit over to the right or to the left if I want to move it further away from that line that was drawn. I also have a vertical shift if I like to see it go up or down. It's a percentage value and of course you could come in here and type in an actual value. Just by typing in the 5 for example and hitting enter actually applies that change. So I'm going to bump that down to 2 just like that. So those are a number of changes that I've made to selected or swipe selected text. Another option when you've swipe selected your text is to change the spacing between the characters called kerning. You can see it's set to 0%. If I want to bump that up to spread them out, that's a good way to do it. You can see with each click, 5% is being added or subtract when I hit the down arrow. And I can go below 0 as well if I want to squish things together. Eventually, they'll get too close and it almost looks a little bit too uncomfortable. So I'm actually going to go below zero, but I'm going to go to minus five. That gives me a little less space being taken up by my text, but it's the same text, and I'm done. So I'm going to come over here to my pick tool now. My artistic text is still selected. One last change we can make is from our color palette. And if I want to change the color of this to maybe a dark blue, I just click on the color that I want including the over and under lines, everything changes color. Shift F4 on your keyboard will zoom you out to the full page. Deselect by clicking on a blank spot to see those changes. Now let's go over to our ear of corn here. Again, that is artistic text. F2 accesses my zoom tool. I'm going to zoom into this area right here. And let's look at some other changes we can make from our character formatting docker. Well, if we go over to our alignment options, our horizontal alignment, this will apply because we've got two lines of artistic text here. So, for example, if I go to left, which is the current default, you can see everything's lined up on the left side of the text box, so to speak. If I go down to center, there's a real live preview of what centering would look like. See how corn moved over? It's centered underneath ear of. Right alignment, characters are lined up on the right. Full justification doesn't work in this case because the second line only has one word in it, but it would add extra spaces between words so that text is flush on the left and the right hand side. And force justified is doing exactly what I was talking about, but inserting spaces in between that single word at the bottom so that it is flush on the left and the right. I'm going to go up to center and click on that. All the other options are available to me as well. And of course, if I wanted to change character shifting, and kerning, I would have to swipe select that text using my text tool. When I'm done with character formatting, I just click this button up here to turn it off. Shift F4 will zoom me back out and I'll deselect by clicking out here. Now what about some of these fancy effects that you see like artistic text across the top? Well, those are not applied through our character formatting docker, but rather through some of the interactive tools that we'll be talking about in a separate chapter. So we'll save that for later. But now you should have a good idea about how to format your artistic text using character formatting. 
paragraph formatting is a little bit different and requires some different types of formatting. So we're going to be getting into paragraph formatting in this chapter as we move through the lessons.